Wait, what's up, Jacob? Audio sounds pretty okay. We're going to be going in a second as we wait for the people to come in and we'll talk about what we're doing. If you're not in our Discord, you'll kind of find out pretty quickly what the hell is going on. So uh, just uh, wait here for a second, let some people come in, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start this. I'm going to say that's actually pretty true. Uh, if you're not in a Discord, you should be and find out all the things that are going on, including a ton of delayed and canceled and graveyard projects that I've started and stopped over <laughs> a bunch of time. Uh, we are going to be starting a new series, though, finally, uh, first of the new year, or finally kind of uh, get back into doing some different things and take your questions, uh, field any questions you might have, and this episode is really just going to be about setting up for the new show. So, uh, like I said, a couple more minutes and we'll start. I am hiding. Sorry, I'm setting some stuff up. Like I said, once we get a few more people in here, we'll, uh, we'll start. Probably start at the... A couple seconds, actually. Probably about 15 seconds or so.
All right, we've got a few people in here now, so I guess we could probably start and uh, talk about what's going on. Yeah, if you're on the Discord, you know what's happening. Can I raise the volume? Is it uh, my volume, or is it the music? Still waiting for an answer. Both could be a little louder. Okay, um, let me go and see if, what I need to fiddle with. Hold on one second. Uh, let's see. See how that sounds. Is that any better? Tekka Underground is a Seaverse Fed. No, it is um, it is something stupid we're about to do. Something that might happen in real life. All right, if we're sounding okay, uh, I'm I'm getting into the yellow and red here, so I think I'm okay. Um, but let me know if if we're running into some issues. Uh, I'm I suck at Streamlabs. I never do it, and I don't like to do it. And that's why I don't do it that much. So um, I don't know the, the nitty gritty on terms of what we need to do with it. Um, all right, let's let's get over to the game here and let's talk about what we're doing. Okay, so we are booking something called Azteca Underground. Um, so what is that? If you don't know. Uh, there are a contingent of Lucha Underground expatriates in, in a MLW right now. Uh, so they uh, you got Mil Mortes over there and uh, uh, I'm trying to think of who else is over there. But there, there's a few people and they've kind of formed a faction. And recently there was some weird storyline where they're saying that something called Azteca Underground bought them. And they're on Twitter and man... It sounds like they're gonna reboot Lucha Underground. Um, basically, they are on Twitter and they are showing off, you know, uh, all these like follows of, of people that used to be involved with it, and it, it seems like it's gonna be. And and then the rumors are coming out that it's not a Lucha Underground reboot, and it might just be a faction and a storyline uh, that's happening. So I got really bummed, and. Um, so I decided that I really just want to do it because I think I've talked about it before. Lucha Underground, by by and large, probably well away from everybody else, um, was my absolute favorite wrestling promotion. In a lot of ways, it did what I kind of wanted wrestling to do in general, just kind of break away from the reality of the, the idea that it's a live show being put on and performances and, and bring it into almost like this more like television you know fantasy world where they can really do whatever they want uh, you know it kind of faltered near the end uh, but the first three seasons I think especially were very strong and uh, you know they could have done more interesting things with it but obviously they got stuck in a situation where you know it, it, it turned to nothing so we're going to take that idea of Azteca Underground a spiritual successor that is going to soft reboot Lucha Underground. It might have some interesting characters that are similar. There might be some that are the same. Um, because obviously, like, example, Mil Mortes was in um, Lucha Underground and it exists also in MLW now. You know, so we got this kind of 
uh, synergy that we're going to go through. So we are using the new Real World Chronicles uh, February 21 save that the uh, database just went online this uh, this morning, as a matter of fact, this is at afternoon. Alexander Hammerstone, Hammerstone first signing for reboot Lucha Underground. I, you know, I was just thinking about that, <laughs> but um, so uh, again, we were talking a little bit about this, like literally, like last night on the Discord. Um, that's how quickly these plans evolve. Um, and if you're on there and you're interested in seeing some more of the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, there's a link to the Discord in the description of this live stream. I highly recommend going on. Um, it's a lot of fun. There's not a lot of people on there, but it's always nice to have some more. Uh, we just got done watching the Royal Rumble together uh, yesterday, and that, or, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> and that was a lot of fun. It felt, feels like so much longer ago. Um, but, you know, it's always nice to have some new faces, so please uh, encourage you to do so. Now, let's go through what we're going to do with this save we're not going to do any booking this is just backstage management i'm gonna show you what we got show you the wrestlers that we have and why so far and then from there we're going to all work together to kind of come up with what we might need to change tweak add etc um uh, so if you guys are ready um uh, bill <laughs> Persona's, but for copyright, it actually has to be Bill Mortes. So he's actually Bill Mortes in MLW, though. But um, yeah, I mean that would be great. No, <sighs> get the pogs out of here. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. Um, so Azteca Underground, we were starting it up. Um, basically, going to be same location, same general aesthetic and style as Lucha Underground. Uh, the product, pretty simple, Lucha Libre, Grindhouse. Um, so that's essentially what Lucha uh, Lucha Underground was, which was the idea that it was uh, often dark storylines, characters, match quality is still important, hardcore matches, and fast-paced exciting spectacles form the core of the in-ring output. And it gets us the um, the nice effects of uh, um, the, 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 I can't pronounce that, but it's the uh, demasking becomes a very serious event um, and obviously we have uh, Styles hard on workers which just makes sense fans are open minded minded will accept any match type which is awesome they'll they will accept a cinematic match um, and you know some some technical penalties and stuff like that um, so is there any chance you could use the Lucha Underground titles yeah I mean I think we'll probably use them and just relabel them uh, because the, so the thing is, is that if if we're trying to base this off of reality, out of a potential what if and a potential real life thing that could be happening, um, you know, AAA and MLW have a working agreement. This seems like this might be some kind of project in conjunction between them, um, probably to get some of their wrestlers into a more regular excursion into the U.S., uh, which is kind of what Lucha Underground was. So certainly they have technically all the rights to Lucha Underground. The thing that they don't really have is like the El Rey network issue. Um, so we don't know where we're going to be. Um, but, you know, in the universe, we are basically probably like a subsidiary of AAA. Um, so so we have that ability. Um, there's not much to say about the product, but this is basically exactly what Lucha Underground was, integrated wrestling, um, Technico and Rudo, instead of obviously facing some heels, um, and loosely enforced, there's some some kind of gray between those. Um, <laughs> the end of man says, instead of Drago, it's Lizard Doe. Um, yeah, no, I mean, instead of Drago, would the knockoff version of Drago just be Luchasaurus? Um, so, <laughs> we set our base popularity to be similarly to um, a little bit less than MLW, so we're going to be starting as a tiny company. Uh, very, very small, a little bit more compact, because it's, it's essentially a child of AAA, and... Uh, or, well, not necessarily a child, but a, like a sister company, AAA, but basically kind of like a weird in-between MLW and AAA. Uh, Jacob asked, no intergender matches. No, there will be. Um, it will be 
um, just total chaos because, again, just like Lucha Underground, uh, the men and women fought each other. didn't matter. My screen isn't showing. Oh, no. Let me fix this nonsense. Hello. Let us let us bring bring about the screen. There we are. That's much better. Um, I, <laughs> I forgot I have to press the transition button before I transition. Um, so we got. No, we are not bringing Kerwin White in there. So let's let's go through the tour again. Uh, product again, Lucha Libre Grindhouse um, with Technico and Rudo being loosely enforced with integrated wrestling. Uh, a as we could see, gives us pretty much as close as you can to what the stylings of Lucha Underground are. Um, so that is pretty good and solid. Um, in terms of our popularity, we have a set to what would be considered a uh, tiny region we're a little bit a little bit ways up from tiny so it's gonna be a small company financially gonna be a bit of a problem um we might have to figure out about what is the right amount of money for this project i set it for a million which might be actually too generous but um you know you would figure anywhere between one to three million would be some kind of like startup for this project that would have been given out um from triple a to them So, basically, pretty flat across the board. Slight dips up in Southwest and the Tri-State, because Tri-State is always a hotbed. Um, and a little notoriety in Mexico based on where the wrestlers are coming from. Uh, we are based out of the Southwest. Uh, so, because we are, we're taking that Boyle's Height. In fact, one of the first things we have to do is probably make a Boyle's Height arena. Um, I want to wait to do that in game because one that'll suck up some of that uh, that one million dollar capital there, and also we'll be able to see how many people uh, we really are expecting in a show, so we can have something that's reasonable as we make that temple and kind of rebuild it. So Daniel, with the with the actual facts here, bringing out saying uh, LU had generous financial backing from Grindhouse. Uh, so one million is fair. I thought so. Like I, you know, I mean, you could argue that it could be a little bit less because the original Lucha Underground was a like a Bruckheimer um, joint, right? So it had some of that uh, some of that Survivor money going into it in a, a little bit, and uh, uh, El Rey was also doing probably some sponsorships um, in terms of how the the capital was raised. Um, but you would think it probably had like something like. Maybe like, you know, three to five million or something like that to start. So one million is a lot leaner uh, of a thing, but that's also because we're starting a lot smaller. Which is which is okay to me. I'm uh, I'm generally okay with that. I think that uh that could provide a nice little challenge. We're starting uh much smaller, uh smaller company than we are playing in the NWA, so um, you know, hopefully we can grow fast, but we have those other sort of issues that we're going to have to deal with just being a uh, smaller company. Backstage rules, I set nothing. Uh, I figure we'll set that in the middle of the game as we need it. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that as we get to it. Now, uh, contracts. So, as I was saying, the, the weird real world thing uh, on Twitter, the, there's a, a Azteca Underground page now that's made by MLW, but it might just be a faction and not this sort of dream revival of Lucha Underground. Um, but they have a listing of about 40 names that are they are following, and they're all alumni. So we um, we have some initial contracts. Um, so here's our initial contracts. We are going to find a few more today with your guys' help. Um, we need, and let me go back to this real quick. Our estimated roster size is is 25 is the minimum. We have 20, so we need five. Uh, we do have some personalities. Um, 
So, okay, yeah. So we actually have a little bit over on them, technically, but that's fine. Um, we only have one ref, which should be fine. Um, we also technically have potential for road agents, but nobody's actually set. I think Shavo is going to be mainly our road agent when we are not using him in wrestling. Um, Zane says, it'd be cool and fun to see you book a Latino World Order faction. Yeah, I mean, that. that I, one of the things that's kind of compelling to me to this is that I've never been super familiar with the Lucha Libre scene, but I have like a passing familiarity. Um, and obviously the, the Lucha Underground element I knew pretty well. So it's kind of going to be cool to see, one, to do some more hardcore stuff, some more death matches, some more, um, some more edgier elements where NWA is very kind of clean. And then obviously we were doing the NXT for a little bit um, before that save kind of collapsed and unfortunately just re it revealed itself to be kind of untenable um so we're gonna have something more grittier more fast paced to play around with something's gonna be more taxing on wrestlers it's something we're gonna have to deal with and figure out um what to do with it not cool assigning six sexy start well you know what we need to we need to she's a scumbag and we need to make our uh <laughs> we need to make this uh this locker room suffer <laughs> because it'll make me suffer and it'll be a good show. Um, no, we signed Sexy Star because she is one of the people that are um, listed on the following um, on the uh, Twitter page. So everybody that they followed that was available in the game, I put in, assuming that if this was a real thing, these are the people that they're contracting. Uh, obviously, Sexy Star is a scumbag, but also is very successful in AAA and clearly... Um, they do not seem to care too much about that. Um, of course, her character in the the save is uh, is appropriately toxic, so that'll be sort of the problem that we have. Um, so that that'll be sort of the <laughs> the, the the thing we will suffer from it. Um, but yeah, so going through here, we have a nice blend of people, and because of the way the contracts are set. Um, we basically have free reign over AAA people. They're all signed as non-exclusive written in uh, AAA, which is super awesome. That might be an oversight, um, or it might be something that I'm not aware about, but they, they are basically available to us. Um, no, I, Sexy Star came back at one point. I, I'm pretty sure she, she did some MMA, and I swear she showed back up somewhere. Um... But I don't know if she's still in AAA, though. But I, she she was outcasted from, like, all the indies. But um, I'm pretty sure they still had her around somewhere. So so who do we have? Um, so a lot of the familiar faces from uh, Lucha Underground. Dario Cuerto, Drago, Tejano, um, Big Rick. We've unretired um, and brought him in here. Yeah, she she destroyed Rosemary. Um Ivelisse, we have, even though she's working at AEW, uh, she is signed to a non-exclusive deal, so we can keep her. Um, Laredo Kid is on the list, um, who's the current, I want to say, cruiserweight champion in AAA, I think is the the, the one. He had that awesome match with uh, Omega at uh, Triple Mania. Uh, Matt Cross, bringing back Son of, uh, Son of Havoc. We got Marty DeMoth here. Um, Pentagon and Phoenix are both available. But interesting enough, while Pentagon and Phoenix aren't available um, because they have open contracts, uh, unfortunately, Angelico and um, um, his partner, whose name is slipping my mind for right now, are actually signed as exclusive in AEW on the save. So we couldn't take them. Willie Max available, Thunder Rosa, Superfly, um, Hernandez. So it's 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 a light. We need some more people. I honestly think we need I I think we need ten more people, to be honest. Even though the minimum's five. Uh, because we need to rotate people out. Jack Evans, thank you. I don't know why I always forget him. Um, because he's the actually the one with personality of the two of them. Um, so you think I would I should be able to figure it out. Daniel says we got to get some new blood and poke some talent. Um, absolutely. I, I am always disrespecting Jack Evans. It's, it's true. It's not not a lie. Uh, one of the things I'm also doing, um, and I'm going to pat myself on the back about it because I'm just really happy with it. So 
I want to, one of the things I want to focus on in this save is um, really maintaining the balance between heels and faces. I do a horrible job at it, um, and a little bit of it is um, the, the way the game is set, for the most part, most of the companies don't punish you for it that much. Now, of course, I did not set it to punish me um, because Lucha Underground didn't have a very defined face versus heel. It's pretty loosely defined. But I want to make sure that I am maintaining the balance between, uh, you know, our heels and faces, our technicos and rudos in this case. Um, so one of the ways to help me, and I think will make it visually interesting, is I made custom graphics for every wrestler that's signed with us, and will continue to do so. Uh, so I was showing these off in my uh, Discord, but um, let's just pull up someone randomly. Um, so Chavo has a custom one. We kind of made these sort of more grindhousey, like or behind like a, a black, um, like kind of gritty uh, wall area, and there's sort of this blue haze around um, around them, and that's because he's obviously currently right now a face. Um, but if I were to change that and make him into a heel, I could go into this sort of darker red one. I think it's cinematic. It's a little bit more uh, uh, interesting visually. Um, I think it fits the theme versus the the, the current um, the current pack, which just have all these stars behind it. I don't know. I, I'm not really a big fan of this this pack that much. Some of them are the black and white. Some of them are the stars. Um, you get a nice up close with the face, but that, that's about it. Um, so all of our saved wrestlers are, are, are currently signed wrestlers i should say sorry have a face and a heel um pitcher available to them and we've set that all already uh unless they are a staff member in which case they have sort of this greenish haze because they generally are not uh faces or heels in most situations so i like it i think it's going to add some nice visual variety and make the game look a little bit unique a little bit extra work because we have to go in here and um, basically go through people and you know um, modify through some some Photoshop stuff. But I, I think overall it, it looks good. So we have a light, a lean one. You know, Sabatelli. No, it's not. That was Matt Stryker. Um, and also, no, we're not hiring. You know, we're not hiring. You know, Sabatelli for the save. Now, um, let's look at real quick. Um, with our company relationships. So this is the one, the first thing I want you guys to tell me how you feel about. We have two relationships, MLW and A, uh, AAA, right? Um, our relationship, generally positive, quite positive both ways. I said that we are sister companies. Sister companies basically, f it never naturally happens in a save, um, but prevents them from ever separating. Um, because we are essentially, while not necessarily a child company, um, because we are sort of this weird amalgamation, um, we'll never really depart a relationship or have a negative relationship. Now, no one's talking bad about Savvy. I just, we're not going to hire him. Um, but also, he's a, he is a snitch. Uh, he definitely was sent to AEW once to just uh, um, spread a <laughs> to get a bunch of leaks. Yeah, he, um, Savvy and somebody else, I think, uh, um, was it, uh, Caesar ben Balani, I think his name is, or something? They were both in AEW Dark around the same time that a, a, uh, a batch of leaks started happening. And, uh, I, I think it was Jericho basically blatantly said, yeah, we figured out who it is. It was some reject trying to get in good with his old boss kind of situation, and we shut that down. Um, and I don't think Savvy was ever back, so... Um, yeah, I think Savvy, Savvy went, uh, went to AEW, went to Dark, started snitching and leaking stuff as an insider agent for NXT, um, and then got his ass kicked out. It's very fascinating. It's very bizarre. Okay, so anyways, back to actually this. Um, we're a sister company. We can... Um, we are agreed to a talent trade. 
and we are agreeing to take developmental and excursions. Makes sense. We're basically a smaller uh, child company for them, right? So I don't think there's a problem with that. MLW, we are not a sister company. We just have a sort of relationship with. They have a mildly positive view on us. We have a quite positive view of them. And um, we have a friendly attitude. We get a trading agreement and accepted excursions. We can't accept developmental. Not that they have any anyways, because we you think you can only have one developmental contract out with any other co any company at any given time. So I think this looks good. Um, let me know if you guys don't think that looks good. But basically, it gives us the ability to um, trade talent between the two of them if we need to. Uh, we don't need to that much, though, because honestly, both of those companies' contracts are pretty open in terms of non-exclusivity. So I'm not that concerned. All right, so we have a hashtag don't sign savvy movement um, happening in the chat right now. So I, I'm going to say we probably are not going to pick him up. Uh, <laughs> so uh, one of the things we want to look at is maybe finding 10 more people that uh, fit the Lucha Underground Revival aesthetic um, that potentially could be good to bring in. Now, it I, I don't know what we have in terms of... Um, like, I don't know what the breakdown is going to be, I should say. I don't know where these guys are going to stack in terms of the main event scene, um, where I, I would probably assume pentagon and phoenix will definitely be within the main event scene um by default they're just gonna be considered major stars um with uh no more taste aka ricky banderas might be not far behind and um i don't know about the rest or kind of all middle of the pack um i was thinking of actually looking at um mlw first and look at who they have um, for our 10 people that we might want to hire. Um, because I suspect there are some people... Now, we could get L.A. Park and uh, L.A. Park Jr. Eh, I don't know. I I don't know. I, you guys tell me what you feel about it. I, I've never been super enthusiastic about the tag team, and I'm not really that interested in having a broad tag team scene uh, because we're just not going to have nearly that many people um because so obviously we have the, the three of them uh, uh the son of la park la park jr and la park um i don't know if i'm, I'm interested in bringing them in <laughs> the von erics you know i i was just saying that i was likely not going to do that um because there's such a prominent role in our current save um just bring in la park that's not a bad idea just one of them um i mean we could always bring them in later if we need to. I was contemplating Hammerstone. I think, um, I think if we need to replace a Brian Cage level powerhouse, I think Hammerstone would be a good get here. Um, can play both face and heel or Technico Rudo pretty good. Um, Zelina Vega. Ooh, that's a good one. So I'm gonna go back to this before we forget. Let's let's go see. This is why we do this. I never would have thought about it, but absolutely. Um, does she have? You think she's gonna have a different name in here? Anyone know what her um her stage name outside of WWE was? Is Hammerstone hardcore? Well, well, we'll look at Hammerstone's stats. We can make him hardcore. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I would suspect she would be a fantastic get for us. I don't know what the price is, but we'll worry about that later. Um, let's look at those stats. Well, I shouldn't. I should not actually be looking at stats. This is the initial setup. So this is why we're only looking for a couple people to really start it off. Um, but I, we'll look at it. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah, I think this is a no-brainer. I think this would be a good get. And she has that manager element, too, she could always go into. 
Uh, Selena De La Renta, I think, is signed, is, like, the only one signed to an exclusive in MLW. We'll take a look at it. Um, especially because, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to take a look. I think, I think this is a good get. Um, I think this is a no-brainer, and it fits the aesthetic for sure. Um, we're doing nothing but just handshakes per shows for now. We we are so much tinier than we even are in the NWA save. We cannot really afford written contracts and stuff like that. And especially doing it prior to the startup, um, things can get ugly. So that, that is not what we're going to do. Um, Abaddon's not a bad idea, but I think she's probably um, locked into AEW right now. So let's let's pull her in. That's a good get. Um, I think everyone seemed pretty positive on Hammerstone. So I think we'll bring Hammerstone in. What do you guys feel about um, Jacob Fatu as another powerhouse, another Rudo in the uh, in the arsenal for us? Uh, we got a lot of flippy people, but, uh, you know, we could have some slow down wrestling matches as well. Throw him in here real quick. Taya Valkyrie, I think, is available. I think she has just a paper appearance in, or a written appearance in uh, Lucha Underground, I want to say. But we'll have to take a look at her. We could get her. Um, the new Matanza. I mean, we could technically just hire Jeff Cobb and bring him in as Matanza if we wanted to, right? <laughs> um, what's, what's Jeff Cobb's contract situation like? Is he still a mercenary everywhere, or is he finally locked down to somewhere? I mean, I already have, I even have one ready, you know? We got it ready, so. Vance Warner. I think Cobb, well, Cobb has a lot of contracts here. What's he looking at, like? Written, but not exclusive. So we could grab Cobb to be Matanza. Um, I don't think we need him right now, though. And he's not locked down to anybody, so like we don't need to grab him right away. Um, we can always bring him in later, but you know, obviously because like Matanza was not in the beginning. I think he wasn't until season two, really. He was only alluded to in season one, so um, we could follow a similar path. We don't necessarily need to bring him in right away. Uh, so we got a Fatu, a lot of Fatu. Trey Miguel. Let's see what his stats are here. What's the situation? He's in contract everywhere, but I don't think he's exclusive anywhere. So, usually it's a good sign when you have a bunch of contracts. That's for Trey. I don't. I don't know if Fuego is available. Um, yeah, I saw, I saw the other one I was thinking of, uh, was actually AR Fox, because as a high flyer would be a good get, and, um, could definitely use him in an interesting way. Um, he wasn't on much, but I think it would not be a bad option. I don't know much about Trey Miguel here. What's your skill set look like? Strongest is really good aerial, actually. Really good aerial. Piss poor menace. So that should be a very horrible Matanza. Um, Walter. Walter would be such a weird, weird get for a Lucha company. <laughs> uh, I think we'll we'll put this in our back pocket. Here is definitely an option. Um, Let's, let's table him for now. I'm not 100% sure yet. I don't think Fuego is available, nor who I want, but um, I'll look. Yeah, I think he's probably exclusive to AEW. Damn it, he's not. I, I don't think I want him, but what's your skill at? His aerial is actually really solid. Everything else is kind of crap, though. No, we are not getting Scott Steiner. 
score Lucha. <laughs> Arlito is actually not a bad idea. Um, no, I don't think we're gonna get Fuego. Maybe. Actually, I, we might get Fuego. I don't know. Uh, Carlito, I do not hate, though. I don't know what his contract situation is. I would like to see what his stats are. Um, but I feel like uh, fit, he fits the the sort of faded veteran that we can feed into somebody. Um, he's unemployed. What's your skill level at? Actually, Fuego is a little bit better. Um... Fuego is actually a little bit better popularity wise not actually that great either hmm. I don't know I'll, we'll take a vote I'll, I'll take a clear vote um, yes or no on Carlito in the chat and I'll take the majority decision yeah we'll check out uh, AAA's roster in a second We get a very confident sure from Josh. What's his mic skill at? Um, Fuego's or Carlitos? Carlitos' mic is fine. We'll 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 do well for us because charisma is very good. Um, all right, I'm seeing a lot of. Uh, we have famous B already. Yeah, okay, so let's get... I think I think it's a unanimous decision that everyone wants to see Carlito, and I think he fits the brand, too. Uh, he he kind of reminds me, he'll be like our Chavo Guerrero, even though we have Chavo Guerrero, of sort of that transitionary character um, that we could we could do a couple different things with. I think that should be kind of fun, to have him be the... Well, actually, multiple things. We have him be sort of the faded star that uh, a new up-and-comer topples. He could be the resurgence that he gets his due you know that he didn't necessarily get or he could have he could snap and turn psychotic and uh uh be a, a terror monster with a chip on his shoulder uh tjp i think is in impact uh, we'll, we'll think about tjp um we do have famous b already um Savior is here for like three minutes. Amazing Red. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Another older one. No, no contracts currently. Active wrestler. It's a high flyer. Stats are okay, but not not incredibly uh I mean I, I think he could be cool. I, I think this is another one we table for now and think about running back around. I think this might be a good in-game pickup. Um you know <laughs> so I someone should make a list of the people that we kinda want during the game. I don't know if he's a, a person that we're going to start with, though. Because um, I, I, I don't know if we need him yet. Uh, we're not going to get Will Ospreay. Dr. Wagner Jr., I mean, it's doable. Like, anybody in AAA is doable. So, you know, question is, do we have a role for Wagner right now? Um, let's look at AAA. Who do we have in AAA? Okay. The contracts. Now remember, I think almost everybody's available. Like, I, I'm not really encountered anybody that has an exclusive contract. So, um, anybody is on the table for the most part. Um... <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess technically Kenny Omega is too. Um, known Lucha Libre star, um, 
Kenny Omega. Um, who do we got on here? We got Ready to grab Willie Mac. Um, we grab Puma King already. <laughs> it would actually be pretty awesome to bring Kenny in for his quest for gold, but um, I don't think we're going to start there. Uh, we could always be a pit stop for the Kenny Omega, but I don't think we're going to make that jump. All the Parkas. Um, so many Parkas. We got Laredo Kid already. Um, we got Phoenix and Pentagon already. Someone's really big on Australian Suicide. I don't know Australian Suicide. At all. It's an Australian wrestler. I'm seeing multiple people seeing Australian Suicide. Let's let's look at this uh, look at this fella. Can we uh, can we look at him here? Let's pull out and take a look. Hold on. Oh, that's company. Nope. Burp. Yeah, I just I, I'm not I'm not that interested. What's what's his real name? We just saw him. Damn it! I'll have to go up here. Yeah, I, I don't know if we necessarily need a joke character. Like that's the one thing. Is like I think I think we'll probably stay away from some of the jokier characters from Lucha Underground just because we don't have like everybody on the roster needs to be doing something because we're not going to have a huge roster and they're going to be hurt a lot. So like uh, you know, we're not going to grab. Microman or Masquerito, uh, Dorado, you know, or like we're, we just need a little bit of everyone needs to have a, a strong place here. Ryan Rollins. Okay, I think that was probably it, but I'll just double check because I'm here. I wish you could just jump from this to that. Um, I don't think we can. Ryan Rollins. Okay. Weren't twenty five percent of Lucha Underground's characters jokes? Um, like three of them were, and that's about it. Um, but we don't even have the space for that. I don't think. Like I don't. I don't think we have the the depth, and we're not gonna be able to afford the depth to have some joke characters. I am so confused as to why he's not showing up. Um, and I'm getting so frustrated. <laughs> That's so annoying. Name name the ten joke characters, and don't say Jake Strong. What do we need for Lucha Underground Legend? Our Genesis, I mean, like I, you know, the Psycho Clowns also are interesting. I don't know if I want to bring them in right away. Um, another situation where I kind of like the idea of bringing them in later as we, because I think. We, what we need to do is really focus on singles and maybe a mid-card title um, and not really focus on tags or trios. And as we move up into small and we can start to afford a larger roster, that's when we start to bring in some of the tag teams from AAA. Got L Londoner. I mean, we do have Famous B, but, you know. That one homeless guy. That's just that. That's. You could do Joey Ryan. Uh, we could do Joey Ryan, but based on how upset people got when I had Sexy Star, I don't know. <laughs> that's the best idea. Um, Jonathan Gresham would be not a bad pick, I think. Um, Argenis. Do we want Argenis? 
I, let me get a, a yay or nay in here. I was never a huge fan, honestly. Um, I kind of grabbed some of the luchadors I already want. Um, I don't know if we need him yet. Uh, we do have Drago, so... Seeing, seeing a little, a little mix. So, you know, we could always bring him in later. Bengala, not a bad idea either. But let let's look outside a AAA because I I do think we have a pretty good collection. Let me go back to what we have here. Roderick Shepard. I'll bring him up and take a look then. And see if we can find them. So, so we do have quite a bit of that triple A flavor. So we got Superfly, um, Sexy Star. We have Penna and, and Phoenix. Uh, we have Laredo. We have Drago. We have Blue Demon. Um, you know, we probably could use a little bit more. We have Tejano. Uh, we might be able to fit one or two lucha more luchadors in there. Um, it's just, it's hard for them, you know, um, mixed with styles. So you kind of have to balance them out, but it's doable. Ultimate Dragon's like a thousand years old, though. Oh, and we, ha we do have Mil Mortes because we have um, uh, Ricky Banderas, who is Mil Mortes. Tessa Blanchard. I feel like... Okay, so hear me out about this. I'm not against the Tessa Blanchard front. Um, but don't you feel like she should be someone that should come in like middle of the season and not right away? Because we, remember, we we're building not everybody we want right now. we got to think about how bruised and weak people are going to be. We need to rotate, rotate people out. So we need to have new hires down the pipeline. And I think she's a better mid-show get than a starting get. And remember, we have integrated wrestling. So we do not have a women's roster, like a women's division. Um, so right now, Eva Lee, and Thunder Rosa and Sexy Star will be fighting, and Shaw Guerrero are all going to be fighting in an entire roster together. Um, so they don't necessarily have to uh, fight just each other. I mean, Ultimo Guerrero, or Ultimo Guerrero, <laughs> Ultimo Dragon's really cool. I just don't know if he's actually wrestling now. <laughs> Jacob says, just don't put the belt on Tessa because <laughs> she'll hold it for ransom. I mean, that's true. We, we got to be careful about that. Um, all right, so let's, here's what we're going to do. I want to go to MLW again, and, and let's just look at that contract list um, and see who we want. I think everyone's pretty solid on Fatu, so why don't we, we throw a contract that way? Um... Probably going to have to actually... I not do it from here? I thought you could just look at it. He's written per show, so he's available. Um, oh, I can't. Okay, you can't do it from here. It makes things very difficult. Simon Gotch, I don't know if fits. Uh, Septimo Dragon? Also talking about... I don't know. Uh, we already got Puma King. So, people were also talking about the Von Eriks. I see a place for the Von Eriks, but not right away. I can kind of see them coming in as, like, gringos, and that could be fun. 
party scroll. Um, I think scroll's still locked down somewhere, but we'll, we can look at it. Um, TJP is available. I, I think we grab Fat too for sure. Um, I th how about how about Davari, who also was a Lucha Underground alumni, was he not, or was that a different one of his brothers? Hammer is definite. Seeing Enzo noted, noted. Lucha Libre and Zoomore does sound like a, something I would book. I'll give you that. Uh, Marty Scroll, low key. I, you know, Leah Rush, I think, is also a good pick. Hmm. Loki is... He's exclusive, so we can't take him. Um, how about... Is Leah Rush... Ex I don't think Leah Rush is exclusive, because he's over in Japan. I think Leah Rush is a get. A Fidian. Um, let's... Let's make sure we get... The contracts we were talking about. Oh, you know what? It's probably a better way to do this. Is if I did... The search function. Search... Works for MLW. We'll start from here, and then we'll... We'll pull the contracts we need. Alright. I think Hammerstone's a get. Savio Vega! Do you guys want Savio Vega? I, I, don't, I don't think... He, I mean, I kind of could see him being a good of road agent for us, honestly. Um, did we already grab him? We did grab him already. Okay. Um, Fatu, I think, was a, a, a no-brainer. I think fits perfectly. Seen a lot of Savio. How you guys feel about Leah Rush? Cause I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of like the idea. I kind of like him. I don't hate Davari either, but I could also see Davari being a later addition. Um, and I, I think uh, Selena De La Renta is um, currently in a contract with MLW that is locked in. Um, yeah, it's a written exclusive, so she's like one of the few that are unavailable. We can always bring her in through other means, but. Right now, we're kind of locked in. Um, Savio. Are, are you saying I should put the Prince Puma mask on Leah Rush? And just have his hair sticking out of it? Let's take a look at Savio. What's what's your situation like? What's your MLW contract looking like here? He's written. We can't take him. Exclusive written. Um, again, one of the few. Unfortunately, is unavailable in MLW. All right, we're gonna grab Leo. I believe his contract is everywhere. So usually it's a good indicator if he's in New Japan of America, MLW, and GCW. He's pretty much free um, to do whatever we want to do with him here. So um, again, we're just putting him in a handshake deal. Um, I think that's a good get. King Cougar. Yeah, I mean, well, and then we have a, a King Puma. Right? So you can kind of have that, like, issue between them, I think, could be fun. Uh, was someone talking about Gringo Logo? I, 
I mean, he's been in AAA before, right? Thundercat Leo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about, about Gringo here. Um, I think we've hit where we needed to in here. I think we've gotten the contracts that we want. I mean, we have some people that we might want later here, but I, I think we are fine here. Um, where should we look next? Teddy, Teddy Hart would fit. ACH. Man, ACH comes with some baggage, though. Do we want that much personality issues? Um, good skill set, though. Dude's talented as hell. Huge aerial boost. Um, good star quality. Not great. Not great on the mic, but not bad. Um... Uh, Talking about looking at impact next. I I again I could see ACH as a uh a later hire. I don't know if we want him right out of the gate. Let's look at impact first. We also might be able to look at uh, New Japan of America, see who we can steal. Um Again, I want people that fit the feeling of Lucha Underground. So that dirt, that's pretty broad, but it's kind of it has to pass the sniff test. Um, hey guys, hey guys, what's what's Rosemary's contract like? Should we should we hire Rosemary to work in the same company as Sexy Star? What's her skill set? I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that it would be kind of fun. I'm seeing like a unanimous yes. Uh, pretty decent skill set all around. Not amazing, but you know, great charisma and microphone work. <laughs> um. I think we're gonna do this. <laughs> that was stupid. Yeah, I think we're gonna hire. Um... I mean, we were talking about that kind of Abaddon. Like, we could repackage her. Because remember, that's the other thing is we're gonna kind of repackage people into different characters. So, you know, we'll take kind of what works with her, twist it around, turn it into its own storyline, um, and we can we can really do some stuff with her. Um, and we have a natural meta story narrative of her versus Sexy Star that's always in the wings. That could be a lot of fun. Uh, oh, scenario. Flip Gordon. No, we're not going to dip Flip Gordon. Um, Sammy Callahan technically was in Lucha Underground for a bit. Um, Hernandez is currently in our, um, our save already, as is Willie Mac. Hmm. Look up here. Let's look through here real quick. See if there's anybody. Like Chris Bay might not be a bad grab. That's a lot of people. The PCO. Hmm. I think Chris Bay. Let's, let's look at Chris Bay's skill set. Again, we're looking primarily at two skill sets here. Um, well, three, technically. We're looking for either someone that's a really strong brawler, someone that's a really strong hardcore, or someone who has a really decent aerial skill set. Because that's, that's who's going to play well with this company. Um. He's fine and aerial. Like, he's, he's above average for sure. His technical's nice, but technical doesn't get us that far in this type of company. Um, and his hardcore is abysmal. His brawling's poor. 
Um, but he's young. Decent stamina, not the best, but decent. Um, star quality is pretty okay. Like I think overall this is a good mid Carter, um, and young too. Like so he'll improve pretty quickly. I think this is a good get. I, I don't see a reason why um, we wouldn't add him in. We have to figure out what to, how to package him, but I think I think he's fine. Estia666, he's the, the weirdo that looks like a demon, right? The son of a... Uh, what's his face? I gotta get out of this search first. Hey, cause isn't he the son of... Uh, Damion666? Yes, okay. Chris Bay is not hardcore. Oh, we're, we're getting some some pushback on Chris Bay. I think Chris Bay will work. If if he does not work, we we can he could be the first to be kayfabe shot to death if we need to and fed to Matanza or something. Um, skills hmm, decent flashiness, decent aerial. Um, fairly charismatic and like not like uh, he's uh, he's generally evenly above average. Um, that's hardcore is not bad though, uh, which is I mean not saying this is very high, but um, comparatively that's that's not too bad for us. I don't know what do you guys think about the uh, bestias here or be bestia bestia. Um, he's not necessarily that young, like 20, is that like 29? Um, so, you know, I mean, he, he fits within the sort of tone. He is like a very poor Pentagon. Oh man. <laughs> Was it Morrison Lucha Underground? Um, Yes. No, yeah, hardcore is not a must. To be clear, I'm not saying everybody needs to be hardcore, but what I am saying is that for the most part, we need either a decent brawler because we're going to have them face other brawlers. brawlers. We're going to have to have like a little Rudo fight. They need to be hardcore or they need to be technical. Be one of those three or two of those three. Uh, or not technical, sorry, high flyer. Um, because that's sort of the... the um, that's how we're pairing people up, and that, that's going to be getting us the best results for our matches. Yeah, like, I, I feel like we could repackage him in a lot of different interesting ways. Um, I could almost even see him being turned into sort of a Pentagon copycat, or, like, another another apprentice to, like, Pentagon's master that... uh is challenging him. There, there's some stuff here we could do, and I think he fits the tone. And it's, it's an interesting get, which I always like to have people that we don't normally grab in our saves being brought in. That's always, I'm always going to lean towards some people we don't know that we could repackage or do interesting things with that we've not played with before. Ah, don't worry, Scott. You're, you're just on time. Seeing some Teddy Hart talk uh walter i don't i don't think i'm gonna grab walter um i think walter doesn't fit the sort of southwestern uh lucha libre style in an interesting way for me homicide is a good brawler um yeah like homicide wouldn't be bad bully ray eli drake I, i'm i'm leaning not gonna do eli drake bully ray i could see bringing in but i don't know if i'm gonna bring him in right away um I, I, I could see him fitting that. Um, who else should? Where else should we look here? Actually, what what are we at right now? Because I, I said we kind of wanted like about thirty people. Um, I want to take a look at what we have in the pipeline here. We have quite a bit. What's our estimated here? So we're at twenty eight. 
um, with a maximum. I'm fine with us going between 28 to 32. Like, I'm, I'm fine with us being 30 to 32. So we have some wiggle room for a few more people, some few more interesting grabs. Dalton Castle and his evil boys. I, I mean, dude, I am such a Dalton Castle mark, but I don't think he fits here. Um, Rush or, Dra or Roosh or Dragon Lee. I think both of them are not available. But, like, great picks, sure. But I don't think we can grab either of them. Let's see. Um, he's he's kind of available everywhere, though, isn't he? Written, but not... Is he available? Justin Gabriel. Ah, we, could, we can look at Justin Gabriel. Nick Gage. So, I mean, Nick Gage is pretty hardcore. Um, Dragon Lee's not a bad get. Dragon B. Dragon, Dragon B. Dragon Lee is hella aerial. Hella flashy. Um, his safety is higher than I'd rate it, but... Interesting. Um, man, I um, I think this is not a bad. This is not a bad grab. I think we could do some stuff here. I'm gonna give Laredo Kid a look. Um, I actually have Laredo Kid already signed, so Laredo Kid is on contract. Dragon Lee, what do you guys think? Um, while we're looking at that, we're going to look at Rush. But let me know yay or nay on Dragon Lee. Or Roosh. See, is it Roosh or Rush? I always say Rush, but I think it's actually Roosh. Um, I just realized I asked you guys to pronounce it, and there's no way to actually do that in chat. So that was really stupid of me. Um, I think he's available. Right? Because he's in AAA. Lufisto is another one we can look at, certainly, and, and take a look. Roosh. It is Roosh. Okay. Yes on Dragon Lee. And apparently it's Roosh. Roosh, not Rush. Roosh time. Uh, I'm now going to call him Rush, but Leo Rush. I'm going to call him Leo Roosh. And um, that that's, that's canon now. Um... Let's see what what is Roosh's skill set here. Very good hardcore. Very decent aerial. Like over oh, and crawling. I yeah sure, sure man. I don't know what kind of character. What kind of character would you guys give Roosh in a uh, Lucha Underground style uh, save? Like what kind of character would you package him as? I'm curious. Uh, so I'm not sure. Um, I can see him almost being sort of a, it sounds so weird, be like, almost like a Mexican stone cold, sort of like a tweener that's fighting against everybody. Um, he's got that sort of, like, don't, don't give a damn attitude that, that could really work. The Briscoes, again, I'm not going to go for any tag teams yet, um, but Briscoes, I, I could see being like a gringo add-in. Um, versus <laughs> smaller Brian Cage. Yeah, it's a calm demeanor. I could see that. Oh, it wasn't, wasn't Roosh like the original LIJ? Wasn't he like the guy that, that, uh, that basically spawned the whole idea? Um, I think, I think we said Dragon Lee was a get. So let's, let's grab Dragon Lee here. I don't know. I don't know how I would package Dragon Lee, um, in terms of story here, um, but I think his skill set is undeniable and would be worth getting. I'm a little concerned with how many places that he's working though, um, and that might limit what we could do with him. But that's also okay because we can always just bring him in a as relief. 
Yeah, he found it loose. Okay, so there we are. Um, hmm. So, okay, so we want to look at um, Lufisto. <laughs> Part of me is also still still thinking about that Nick Gage hire, to be honest. I don't know why this Abdullah the Butcher picture keeps on popping up. Uh, older now. Going to be retiring. This is a very strenuous company. That's my main concerns right now. Decent hardcore, though. Decent brawling. Very strong charisma. Um, I can definitely see it. Where are you at? You're on two different companies, so not too bad. Yeah, no, and, and that's true, Juice. Like, yeah, we're not necessarily going to repackage him. Um, in fact, I think for the most part, most of the luchadors are not going to be repackaged. They're basically going to be who they are, um, I should say. Um, but I don't necessarily know where I want to fit him in with the story for them. Um, but that's that that might be either you know here or there. We might have to figure it out. Um, Nick Gage making an MDK triad would be super fun. I'm leaning towards yes on that. Um, I, I don't know. What do you guys think about Lufisto? I think she would be good as an occasional wrestler to bring in. I don't know if we necessarily need to bring her in right now. I think she would be a good challenge for some, like a female wrestler to topple um, and, and be interesting that way. But let me know. Bandito. Bandito's not bad. Um, El Fantasma. Yeah, Lufisto is 100 experience. I mean, we also could use her potentially as a road agent, which is not bad. Um, hmm. What were we talking about here? Let me scroll up. Is it, I missed quite a bit. Um, Jimmy Havoc. I don't know about Jimmy Havoc. I, I, well, actually, I think Jimmy Havoc, well, well, he's not available in AEW anymore, right? Um, I don't know if he fits. Wow, he does... Let's have a, a hardcore streak to him. So that could be fun. Um, but I don't know if he fits the aesthetic for me. Uh, let's see. Dragon Azteca. Try Ray Horus. Uh, Ray Horus is there. I don't know them at all Chatter. i don't remember them oh, oh oh okay yeah i do know them now okay um i do know him is available um strong experience actually never talking about it I'm seeing some Lufus though. Um, I'm not sure about Ray Horse here. Trained by Ray Mysterio, uncle. So th th there's some interesting things to that. Yeah, I think Nyla is unavailable. Wait, let's let's grab Lufus though. I think I think you guys made a good case. I think there's there's potential there to, to do some stuff. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of Nick Gage love, or repeated Nick Gage love. I mean, I don't know. Um, let me type in Nikki. I so again, we're looking for that that southwestern grindhouse, down and dirty, backyard fight club aesthetic. 
Nick Gage would die. Like, so here's the quick question. Would, could you imagine a wrestler fighting for their life in an unsanctioned match in the back of a random, like, weird factory? And if the answer is yes, they probably fit the aesthetic. I'll say Nick Gage probably fits that aesthetic. <laughs> like, I, I'll, I'll go with that. Um, great brawling, immense hardcore. Um, and I do like the idea. Oh, Necrobosher, man. Vance Warner. No, weird. Fuego de Sol is not going in. Sorry. Um, Nick Gage was born for this. Nick Gage could be like a better Sammy Callahan in this situation, right? Yeah, okay. What? What's? Are you available? So I'm a little concerned with how many places he's working, but um, again, maybe just a special attraction. I could see it. Casey Navarro. Casey Navarro might not be a bad get after the game starts. We're, we're down to like the last two or three people to hire now. Uh, Matthew Justice, I'm not familiar with. Kind of looks like uh, Aquaman. Or Dave Grohl from Foo Fighters. Uh, let's see. Well, stat-wise, it's about average, but even. Yeah, we, we need about two. I mean, we actually probably don't need any more. If we were to look at it, we're probably at where we can be. But I'm willing. I always like to run a little bit higher than the maximum because I'm a broken person that likes to have as many toys in the toolbox, in the toy box as we can. Um, so we got a big old contract pool here. What is our estimated roster? We are exactly at 32 right now. So let, let's for fun say 35. Let's get three more. Paul London was a Lucha Underground original. Um, that is true. We are we are trying not to get trios yet. We will build them up later. Um, let's look at Paul London. I can see Paul London being like an early threat. Someone who's a problem that gets iced eventually and gets gotten rid of. He is currently only a road agent, though. So that is going to be a problem. Um, so I think Paul, L Paul London's out. Because if we can't use him even as an occasional wrestler, then you know, I, mean, I mean, I could cheat and add him to it, but I'm going to try to not to mess with the, the save files too much here. Um, so I think Paul London's probably not, not, at, not an out, and I don't think we need him for a road agent. <laughs> all right fine there's a, there's a clearly a lot of love for paul london here i'll bring him in as a road agent and maybe i could convince him in the game to uh to come into the thing um maybe we can get him in Yeah, I think Jimmy Jacobs is now set to exclusively road agent, I want to say. Um, no, he's set to everything. I don't know if he fits in Lucha Underground, though, but I, hmm. I'm not sure. What's your skill set at? This hardcore is okay, and this brawling is okay. Crazy Steve. 
let's let's table Jimmy Jacobs for now. I think it's not a bad hire later. We're getting momentum on Crazy Steve. Crazy Steve's not available unless he has a different name. Um I mean, Quackenbush is, is pretty much gone now, so it's not going to be an option. Um, I could see EC3. I don't know about at start, though. Yeah, like I, I think that's my problem, too. Like, I feel like older Jimmy, or younger Jimmy Jacobs would have made more sense. But I don't know if how I feel about him integrated into that now um i feel like him as the young like crazy guy here i'm willing to do anything i'm this this you know devil can care attitude character um fighting against the vets uh versus kind of being a vet i don't know if that works anymore um mikey nicholas Chuck Taylor. I would love to, but from Mikey Nichols. I see, I see, do not see them. Is that double L's? Okay. There we are. What do we got here? We got a technician. Already one strike against them. Um, Australian. <laughs> hmm. Look at his skill set. Oh, we didn't check out PJ Black. We'll we'll look at PJ Black in a second. I don't think Chuck or Trent are available. I think they're exclusive to AEW. Um, hmm. I don't know. This guy's kind of average. Um, not bad, but as a mostly technician, I don't know if he fits with us um pj black we could look at who i think also did have a stint in a or uh in a lucha underground at one point right i don't remember i'm trying to remember if he was in there or not um high flyer getting older looking older for sure let's see what the skill set is Yeah, I do suck at spelling. Okay. Um, I mean, it's certainly well-rounded, leading towards okay in aerial. Microphone sucks. I don't know. Like, how many? How many older guys do we need? Is I feel like we're kind of filled with old farts already. You know, this guy's like like 41 um how many people do we need to, to end and, and have their careers end here like i don't i don't know if we need one more like it's great hand sure i just don't know if i'm gonna use them to be honest jack keller <laughs> no no um bandito man i don't know I don't know about Bandito. I'm also at the point now is how many more luchadors do you want? Like some of the problems with the luchador characters is they're they're hard to they're hard to adapt into this type of environment. And they kind of become not necessarily stagnant, but they kind of blend together at times. Um with, with with how this is written. Yeah, I th I think I think the last couple well, no, he is definitely a young lion though. Like Bandito's not not far off. I, I think what did we say? We we said two more? Two more wrestlers? Is that how much we have left? We gotta really make these count. I don't know if Band I don't know if I'm feeling Bandito. I'm there's something about about me that's uh being held up on Bandito here. Oh, we still have three. We're getting real picky now. Um, you're getting picky, Durger. 1990 birthday or younger. 
Yeah, look for guys under 30. Okay, so let's let's look at the um Oh, not company. So we want workers search. Uh da 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 minimum age, no limit, maximum age. We're gonna go even tighter. We're gonna say nobody under twenty seven. Oh, that's everybody. We do need to find a young guy project. Here's what we're going to look for. Um, need somebody at work as a wrestler. I want... We want a high flyer or a luchador? Probably a high flyer. Let's look at high flyers first. Um... User character, nationality, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Game status. No, we're not doing Matt Taven. Danny Trejo is definitely our young up-and-comer. Okay, this is going to be too difficult to go through. Um, we were talking about Casey Navarro. Casey Navarro is really young. has some potential what's our skill set look like it's actually not bad for younger um hmm i don't know i don't know what what do we what's the pitch here for Navarro, give me a pitch for who the character is that we could utilize. That because I, I don't I don't necessarily like I, I don't know if I just want they're the young kid, right? Like what what could we package him as? Like yeah, on Casey Navarro. I, I'm still, I still want to hear what your thoughts are story wise for how we package them. Is this gonna be like a, like I, I just don't know what. Again, that give me the pitch for why they're there kind of situation, and I could see it. But definitely in a short list. Golden Boy favored by management. I could see it. Um, while we're waiting, let's no Barbero. I'm not seeing. Am I spelling something wrong? Oh, right. We have the um this still on. No face, not a big deal. We can make a custom one. Messing Luchador uh, works in America, Mexico, Japan. I'm not very familiar with them. Heel feels he's like that. <laughs> Jack Evans 2.0. Dennis from It's Always Sunny, Always the Golden God. Okay, okay, you're pitching. He's like AJ Styles, but like story. Hmm. Hmm. Just call me Scott. Ask what's the story going to be, or what's the, the company going to be story wise? It's essentially Lucha Underground. It's essentially a reboot of Lucha Underground. So the idea is, is it's a underground Lucha, American Lucha Libre fight club that um, it meets at night and is full of bizarre characters that are trying to fight for different reasons some personal some for profit uh, some for glory and some for power um so similar tones to lucha underground a lot of similar themes and probably magical elements as well um so there's sort of that mysticism that will uh, be evoked within it
Um, let's take a look at him. So Ariel, pretty strong. How old was he? 1993. It's a little bit older. Yeah, the Cobra guy. This just sounds like modern day cyberpunk. A persona. Lucha Underground was just cyberpunk. I mean, it always was. That always was been. Always has been. Um, I'm not sure here. Star quality is strong. <laughs> Karate key teacher. All right, so I'm for now. I'm gonna go with Casey. I think you guys won me over with your character pitch. I could see it. Um, if if this person had a a, a picture that I could kind of look at and get a feel for who they are, I'd be willing to uh, take a look at. But I'm not going to go blind on it. I think we go with KC here. I think that's a win. Um, we need a comedy character. I don't know if we necessarily do, but if you have a good one, um, we could certainly look at it. Um, I don't hate the potential of looking at a character um, that's a comedy, but typically the problem with comedy characters is you need at least two people to do the comedy, and then they're kind of stuck always just doing the comedy with each other. Um, and I don't know if I want to waste the real estate on the roster for that. But certainly with the product, there would be no issue with the comedy. Uh, they're They're pretty much open to anything. Yeah, I got the kind of Sammy G mixed with like Darby Allen vibes with Casey, so I can kind of deal with it. Um, Chris Brooks. Pillman Jr. No, we need a mini. No. No, we don't. We don't, Dan. No. Um, I don't think we're going to pull Pillman Jr., um, though I think Xavier at one point had said in the Discord like a uh, Hijo Del Pillman, which I think would actually be kind of hilarious and fun. Um, but that might be something we could bring later on, but I don't think we start with them. Um, bringing out the Conopy's karate teacher. Give someone a bullseye gimmick. That's actually not a bad idea. Um, I do like that. Minis are a stable Lucha Libre. Sure. But uh, nah. We're good. I'm, I'm fine. Psycho Clown. I think Psycho Clown will wait on. Uh, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the roster for now. Like, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling pretty good about the variety that we have here. We're going to do groups or stables. Not yet everything's going to start off pretty individual and as we grow we'll probably build some groups trios and teams out um priscilla kelly i think we're good on female competitors right now hmm kind of just tied at christmas um, I, like there's and like, what? Listen, we can do more hiring after the fact. It's not a big deal. This is just about who do we start with? I feel like we have a good variety of people right now. I I think I think I'm good. Unless uh, just hear me out. Just hear me out. Right, but like. But like that? Huh? 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 <laughs> Known Lucha Libre act Enzo, true cruiserweight undefeated champion. Uh, actually, he's left the business according to this, so we cannot actually do that. But <laughs> I like it, honestly. Um, if he, he has left the business in the game, so we cannot actually do that. 
Um, <laughs> Jinzo. I I would actually like to bring in Enzo, but I I don't I don't think we can because I think he's actually completely left the wrestling business in the game, absolutely completely. So, um, I I don't think we could even hire him um, right now. Even though I'm convinced that he's going to make his return like this year, I I think he'll he'll be coming back. All right, let us look at what we signed. Here is the total complete list of the starting 33 of Lucha Underground. We got Alexander Hamstone. We got Bestia666, Blue Damon Jr., Carlito, Chavo Guerrero, Chris Bay, uh, Dario Cueto, obviously, as the kind of owner, in kayfabe owner, Drago, Dragon Lee, Tejano Jr., Big Rick, Zeke, or Big Zeke, maybe, in our, our version. Famous B, Ivelisse, Fat, Jacob Fatu, um, Carly Perez is, I believe, Catalina? Yes, or Katrina. Um, so it's just a, it's a sort of a valet. Um, Casey Navarro, Conan, Laredo Kid, Leah Rush... Uh, sorry, Leo Rouche, Lou Fisto, um, Marty DeMoth, Marty Elias as a referee, uh, Matt Cross as Son of Havoc, bringing it back, Matt Straker as one of our announcers, uh, Melissa Santos as a, one of our personalities, Nick Gage, because why not, Paul London, Pentagon, um, Ricky Banderas as Mil Mortes, Ricky Reyes, Rosemary Rouche, Sexy Star, Shaw Guerrero, Hernandez, Superfly, um, so Zelina Vega, Thunder Rosa, Vampiro as our announcer, and Willie Mack. I think that's pretty good. I think that's a pretty good starting roster. And there's nothing preventing us from hiring more and moving people out, but we're just about what we want to build early on. <laughs> Smithy goes, Roseberry and Sexy Star, are you sure this is a good idea? No, but yes, it's a bad idea, and I love it. We are going to deliberately solve this inner feud by throwing them at each other. I think this will solve things. This will cause, this will start world peace, you know? You got you got to provide a little bit of conflict. This is this is the thing. This is my my five second rant about mod makers. I feel like mod makers take it too easy when it comes to personalities and uh, make the game too easy. You got to make the game difficult for yourself. the The best part, I guess, quote unquote, about running a wrestling promotion in terms of the gameplay is having to deal with the personalities. So having personalities clash against each other and having to react to it makes it interesting certainly makes it interesting while watching it so yeah absolutely I'm, I'm fine with it uh we need a tv deal we do need a tv deal that is actually the next and final element of this video now um in the the twitter that this is based off of um we saw that azteca tv was um listed I am going to assume Azteca TV is really only available in Mexico. And I'd be correct. Um, so we need to find a location. Now, we could just go to El Rey. I mean, and bring it back. That comes with its own problems in terms of coverage. But it would fit. Uh, or is the Gifts of the God title coming back? Yes, it is. All of the titles will be back, um, though the trios and tag, or was there ever a tag? I don't remember if there was a tag. The, the trios definitely is not going to be back right away. HBO, Netflix. We have some options. So here's the question. Do we want to 
assign a broadcaster or should that be the first episode is us finding where will this tiny little show end up because we can basically assign ourselves anything um, which is kind of unfair like i could see netflix telemundo um well yeah but like part of this is also trying to appeal to a english-speaking audience which is not necessarily something telemundo does um you're gonna get coverage but that's not really like lucha underground was about showing the more like american english-speaking audience uh lucha libre netflix small channel we should look for a small channel let's look for Tourette. i think we, we would so here's the question okay so in the story in the real world and story, what this could be would be something that's a com combination of MLW and AAA working together to make another offshoot of this, right? So it would be something tiny. I could see it being internet-based. I could see it being on cable. Um, cable commercial, probably. I won't find one in a game. Yeah, that's probably true at this point. So we probably have to find something that would fit. Uh, can we find coverage USA? Okay. So here's our terrestrial options. I think Netflix or a streaming service like Hulu or Apple is a solid choice. Try going back to El Rey. You're a hardcore, so it has to be cable. That's a good point. We need something that's not adverse to our hardcore style. Gen America. Um, so we need to find something that is not timid. Um, I think it's risk levels is the uh, is what we want to look for, I believe. Broadcast style coverage risk levels. Um, company tries to pull angle that matches that are too offensive. Uh, broadcast may refuse. So we want something that's medium or higher. WGN apparently has medium risk levels. Ion TV. Ion TV is an option. Um, also has medium risk levels. I mean, sci-fi would be an option. TNT, TBS. Sci-fi has high risk levels, so they would have no problem. Unfortunately, their minimum requirement is small. Is there anybody that would be minimum requirement of tiny? Or are we going to have to just force ourselves into... Um, a company here. We might have to just force ourselves into that company deal. We should be going for high, right? Um, so a hot, this is not a bad option. Owned by NBC Universal Group, which is a kind of a weird situation now. I I think this is the option. I think sci-fi is the best shot check bravo high but against wrestling unfortunately and their company size would be a medium now we're already cheating here but i i feel like we could cheat on a small and what we could do is we can give us a ourselves a one-year deal i mean do you think we should have a i think a one-year deal makes sense story-wise uh one year shot to prove yourself el ray has a very high listen Let's talk about this. El Rey has a very high. Is there anything higher than very high? El Rey will let us do whatever we want. Whatever we want. Let's talk about this. Now. Um, they got some pretty high production values, but that's that's... You know, 
is L Ray being shut down in real life? Probably. Um, but not here. Company size small, minimum popularity, obviously it's gonna be a problem. I mean L Ray used to show it. So there's some lineage there. L Ray also is sort of a that right sort of southwestern kind of thing. It's its coverage probably sucks. Very small all around. Um, Sci-fi coverage is probably a lot better. It's small. With that wrestling stance, you won't last long there. It's not a bad point. Um, Sci-fi is pro. Now, see, Sci-fi is minimum. We we will. We're never going to meet that minimum popularity. Sign Netflix. Yeah, we can let's look at the uh look at the other options here. Look at MTV. MTV has a against wrestling and they are a minimum quality of medium. Our hope would be to get in with a company that after the one year contract we could jump into. I don't in one year there's no way we're gonna get 54 popularity. FX is the next one. Has a high but again, medium. They're not going to. They're not going to take us. Let's look at. Uh, let's look at internet. What do we? There's no internet commercial. Okay. Um, internet subscription. Yeah, FX is going to just be too much for us. So, I mean, we could be on IWTV, but I think the point is that we want to be. On like it's, it, it should be on like a, a network, right, or something. Could just set up stuff and be run like Impact, right? Yeah, that's tr like just run on internet. Um, I don't know if you could just set it for free on the internet. I don't remember, but besides <laughs> start Paramount Network, Hulu. Hulu has high values. Um, where was the Paramount Network? I don't even see Paramount Network. ESPN Plus. Um, we're not going. We're not going to be able to get to big here. We're pretty much out of the gate. Not going to be there. Um, free to air internet. It's just going to be YouTube, which is pretty much anybody. Could be on there. Oh yes, so you 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 can do that, but it that's really I, you're not going to get as much out of it, I don't think, because uh, that would just be like, are you going to air on the internet the tapes? Now that we have the internet free to air, the system's a little bit more uh, nuanced than just playing your repeats on there. You can kind of have your your shows on there. Do YouTube. I mean, we could do YouTube, but... Eh. Check Netflix. Um, what's that? Internet commercial or internet subscription? Where is Netflix? Am I just missing it? Let's go. Everything in the U.S. I feel like I'm just missing it repeatedly. Where is Netflix? Why is there no Netflix here? There's no Netflix. We're, we're missing a sizable amount of... Alright. This is what we're going to do. Here, I think we need to... I want to look at the imports. Look at the Who's mod. See, now that... That's a lot of... Fight TV, Spike. He has Netflix set for America, so... Yeah. That's a weird oversight. I'm not going to...
again, Prime should also be over here. Um, I'm not going to bring everything over because that would be insane, but this is how it's supposed to look. Um, we're, well, let's, let's import those real quick. Apple. Oh, yeah, did it really miss Apple on there? Well, these are just the subscription ones. Well, no problems on there. Okay. Internet free to air. Facebook, watch. BBC player. Hey, you guys want to, you guys want to run the show on Vimeo? Okay. For now, that, that is good. Let's, let's look at what we've just added. Netflix is way too big. It, their requirement for what they want from us is way too big. Uh, so that's not going to work. Um, Pop TV. Small. They're against wrestling. They only have medium levels. Uh, oh, but there's Paramount Network. Medium, we're, we're way too small for it. But again, we can cheat. Like, I'm willing to cheat for small, but I think going to, to medium is ridiculous. Um, tough TV. What is tough TV? They have a high risk neutral, and they're willing for tiny. Does anyone know anything about tough TV? I don't know anything about tough TV. What's your coverage? It's tiny. It's almost completely absent and just focused in America. Um, it would take us. I mean, actually, it wouldn't. Like, we're actually lower than the minimum popularity for it. But uh, but we could we could cheese it to make it happen. CW, I, I think most of these sh channels are going to want something much larger than we are. Yeah, tough definitely sounds like a weird regional channel. Like if the option was tough or El Rey, I'd rather go El Rey. Like, I know they're against wrestling, but. Um, but you know what? No, here here's the problem, and this is a good point people had, is that we need our minimum popularity. We're going to need to m meet their demands pretty much all the time. And can we do that, right, is, is the issue. Tough was dissolved in 2018. Well, there you go. Um... So this is the one issue about putting us on these one of these channels that uh you know Mav TV where we're on uh this currently where we're on in NWA is certainly doable. They are kind of against wrestling. Uh, they broadcast all different types of sports and they have a high risk level. Yeah, I don't want to adjust it too much though cuz I I don't want to just set something for us. I want us to kind of have to play into it. Like, math TV might be the thing again. <laughs> Lucha Underground has an El Rey. It had zero popularity for years. That is absolutely true. Um, but what ends up happening is that we need to meet a certain requirement for the, um, the broadcast deal. So, like, um, if we were to open up a new broadcast deal... And we would do El Rey, for example, let's say, for uh, Aztec Underground. Oh, we have to set a TV show for us, too. So, where is our minimum quality? Based on current, based on the current settings, minimum quality would be required is 40. For on demand if we were doing late evening it'd be 49 61 right so it goes up um so we would need to meet here on graveyard would be 31 um on demand's a little bit better though do tough tv everyone's saying tough tv you guys like it tough huh
go back to tough TV here. All right. So their on-demand requirement would be like 28. Prime times 47. I there's something funny about tough TV that that sounds okay to me. Uh, late evening. <laughs> great, great advertising from Juice here. You like if you like it tough, then you've come to the right place. As Tekka Underground starts now. Um, was a little bit safer. Apparently, Tough TV has legit most cringy indie feds on their shows. Well, this sounds great. I think we're going to be on Tough TV. Um, we have to make a show. So while we're doing that, tell me what whether you guys think we're going to be able to do a late night or like a you know late late night show. Um, I think we're going to have to go to like the late late night. Like we're going to be on at like ten um, because I don't think we can we can probably confidently do. Uh, big numbers with our show. Um, let me show names. Where do we... TV shows. <laughs> Introduce the top TV title. <laughs> Somewhere where it would help to have popularity in Mexico. That's a good point, too. Um... Because that would actually boost our other guys. Now let's let's keep looking at this, but I think we need to add a new TV show. Oh, not in the right folder. Okay, we'll add that later. to be a show one hour um it's probably all we're gonna be able to do um we're just gonna say thursdays but we're gonna have to change it i don't even know when we're gonna change it it's fine and that's true we have a deal with azteca tv that's actually something i have to put in because we do have the azteca 7 deal um, based on what might be happening in real life. So let's add that. Um, I actually almost forgot about that. I want broadcasting deals. So add a new item. First things first. And they're actually, it looks like they might be having a deal with Aztec 7. So I'm guessing one year, like, it's probably going to have to be like Graveyard. Um, I think Graveyard's the only one we could survive on. It's just going to be on way randomly at night. It's going to be at like 12.01. Don't adjust your dials on Azteca TV. If you're in Mexico City, you're going to watch some wild shit because it's going to be popping on. Uh, revenue split. I mean, technically, we could cheese this, but we're not. Um, reasonably, they never really let you have more than like 20, 25%. So we'll say 20. Um, minimum quality. We. Graveyard Slit fits the vibe. I think, I think so. Uh, we actually could put in whatever we want. And I'm just going to cheat a little bit and just say 35 is a round number. Um, and, and that's fine. Uh, exclusive rights in Mexico also seems like the fair thing. Um, this is inspiring me to play a similar game. I hope so. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I am really excited. Like I, I've started and stopped a lot of different projects um, over the years, and this one's always been kind of something that I kind of always wanted to do. Cyberpunk's kind of like that, but something else entirely that I'm still trying to work on. One day it'll get there, and I just. It keeps on becoming ballooning into this other 
amorphous thing, but just as a down and dirty, regular ass TEW save. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. All right, boys. Now or never. Are we on, are we going on tough? Is it tough TV time? It'll be decided it's tough. I like the slogan. Should live stream the episodes. Man, I don't know. I you know, I might do a premiere for them, but I the way I book, you would really find it boring. And that's what I always tell people, um, because a lot of it is me like with a notebook looking at what I have written and then silently typing out what's going to happen and then repeating it and narrating it. Like, I don't think it's that interesting to watch that process. Um, I think you, you might think it would be, but then it ends up not actually being that, that interesting. Down with tough. Um, I think we're going to do late night. 34 sounds perfect and we'll keep it there. Revenue split, let's say 25, and we'll give them exclusive coverage from one year in America. Um, I think that sounds right. Oof. Um, I just like the uh, the slogan here. Hang tough. Only upload the videos at 3 a.m. Um... All right, I think we're looking good here. One year in late night, 34. We're going to be in a really bad situation if we can't output 34 qualities. Signed to, to, to Tony. Um, I do like the idea of actually having a, a tough uh, tough TV title as our mid-card. I think it's actually hilarious um, to make it like a, uh, uh, a hardcore title, like the tough tournament, tough title right uh would be a lot of fun okay i last chance it's everything right here and do youtube for other countries yeah we can just add youtube in um for everybody else we'll do that in the main game i think i think we're good here um so we need a mascot is there a science to outputting 34 plus quality matches? Yes. So um, here's how it works. It's based on your company and that company's product first and foremost. So if your product, look in your product field and find out first of all um, how your matches are rated. And so in this situation, they're rated on a 40, 60, 60, 40. Okay, so either um, either if your popularity is higher than your in-ring performance between the two opponents, uh, the popularity will become the more prominent number and the and vice versa. So uh, if you have two competitors that are not well known, but are very, very good in the ring, what will happen is they'll take their combined number. It'll basically take any modifiers that might up it or down it. It'll find the average between those two numbers. Um, and then it'll give you 60% of your total score based on that number and 40% of their average combined uh, popularity. So if they're, if they're both like, I don't know, 100, 100 in technical, but they're 0, 0, in popularity then they would end up at a 60 um in the performance because while as good as they are no one knew who they were but the match was still strong enough and so that gives you a ballpark you kind of take that number but this is different for every company based on what your product is the 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 breakdown will be different so so that is your, your focus. The other element is what is your, um, where is it here? Match focus? Your match focus is going to be the other thing that is important. With a regular focus, your main event scores a higher percentage of your total score for the entire night. Um, so this is how a match is determined. 
and then how a show's score is determined it takes basically usually your highest your main event plus your highest match plus your highest uh promo or something along that lines it, it'll tell you in there and it'll do the average from that Oh, I got it. Jacob has an idea. Yeah, so it, it totally varies from product to product, um, as as Juice said. Um, yeah, no, it, it's it's important to look at. Uh, it's it and there's wiggle room, you know, because of variables with each match. Everything will be a little bit different. Reading help doc will get you. Yeah, it will. Like th this little. If you've never played before, you're kind of getting into it. Read this thing. Um, this game doesn't do a great job of teaching itself, but these actually do do a good job of telling you what the hell all the features are. Um, and so those are a great starting point to kind of give you a little bit of illumination to how that works. But yeah, so... I mean, we got a show, I think. I think we're pretty much ready. So at this point, all we got to do is come up with some storylines. Um, I would love for you guys to, as this goes live, comment on the actual episode here. I'm going to leave the live stream up, but put comments down um, for, and for those of you that are watching this also um, on playback, tell me what storylines you'd like to see in Azteca Underground. Hopefully we're going to have the first episode aired either this week or next week. It'll, it'll probably, it'll be up next week either way, but uh, it depends on when I get it done. But it, certainly it, um, it, it, it's going to be a cool one. I'm really excited about this one. We got Jacob says the tournament every year called the Eddie Guerrero Invitational for a Rookie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think like doing like Guerrero family tournament or something like that would be awesome. Um, totally could do something cool with it and, and like i said you know we're we're gonna play around with it but the the general theme is it's it's lucha underground revival so you know expect some crazy stuff expect some weird telenovela plot twists expect people dying expect um monsters and mysticism and weird stuff um a lot of it may start to feel familiar with Lucha Underground at first because it's going to be a soft revival. A lot of the characters are coming back in similar capacities, but it's going to end up being our own thing. And certainly, you guys are are the are the creative room. You know, please write in comment fields your ideas, um, and certainly in the Discord, uh, write your ideas. We'll probably make an Azteca Underground channel in a Discord. Um, to have your ideas kind of out there as we kind of form interesting storylines and interesting directions to go. I think it's going to be a really fun series with a lot of long legs. <laughs> Latino World Order. I mean, may maybe. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think that's that's about it. I think we got a lot of ground done. So thank you guys for joining me for this sort of backstage. Um, you know, we don't do it often. But always have fun doing it. So thank you guys for joining me. Um, and hanging from me a little bit. We do have some people we're going to be looking at. Um, as, as people said, like Matt Gomez said, yeah, Ricochet, Dominic Mysterio, absolutely. You know, we need Ricochet. We need Prince Puma, Prince Puma actually here. Um, thank you, guys. I will see you around. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the first episode when it goes live in a week. See ya.